Good morning. Welcome to another teaching here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother, because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters is Jesus. I'm glad to be here another Sunday morning, um, just having the grace of God on me to, to strengthen me, to be with me, just to put out another message here. And we're going to go right into it because we have some scriptures to really go through. And um, the title of this encouragement this morning is Hologram Christianity. I looked up the definition of a hologram and it just talks about um, uh, an image that's created by using um, alternate sources of light like lasers and stuff like that to create an image and with that they've been able to recreate uh, say old famous people that have died to do concerts um, uh, Tupac Shakur, Shakur uh, and let's say Elvis Presley they do concerts with these people that have been dead and they're able to to do live concerts with them but it's just a light show because they're not really there it's not really real so hologram christianity is that the same thing i think it's a another source of light rather than god being the true source of light jesus the true source of light that causes us to be born again instead these christians quote unquote use an alternate source of light to create an image of Christianity, of being born again. Do you get it? This is what we're going to be talking about this morning, hologram Christianity. Let's pray and we'll get right into it. Father, remove me out of the way and and take the victory, Lord. And, and Father, bring glory out of this message, Father, that even one would be saved. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we pray and say amen. Let's go right into it in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, that's dangerous times, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, that just mean you want things that, that other people have, you want their stuff, you want what they got, you just, you greedy, basically, you want things that not, not even are necessarily good for you. You got to have it, right? Got to have what the Joneses have. They're boasters, proud, blasphemers. They're disobedient to their parents. Listen, listen at this list of things, of sins, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, there is no love in these folks. They're truth breakers, false accusers. That mean they lie on one another. They're incontinent. They are fierce, despiser of those that are good. They... They really look at uh, people that seem to be good people, good godly people, and they despise them in their hearts. They're traitors, uh, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And, and these are believers that's being talked about here. These are professing believers. They're hologram Christians. It's hologram Christianity. It's another source of light. It's not the true light of Jesus. How do you know that, that these are, are, are so-called believers, brother nobody? Well, because in verse 5 it says that having a form of godliness. They just have a form of Christianity, a form of being born again, but denying the power thereof. They deny the power of the Holy Spirit, which can cause them to walk in the, in, the, in the ways of Jesus. Let's look at another one here in Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1 in verse 16. Check this out. They profess that they know God. This We just talking about all the characteristics of a person who has hologram Christianity. 
It's they're using a, another source of light instead of having the light, the source, Jesus, the Holy Spirit within them. It's a fake Christianity. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. These people, these uh, Christians, quote, unquote, they profess that they know God. And we have plenty of that going on these days. They profess that they know him. I know Jesus. I know the Lord Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. It says, but in works, they deny him. By the way they live their lives, they deny who he is. It's hologram Christianity. <laughs> it's a fake source of light. Is this, is this you this morning? Is this me this morning? Let's go to 3 John. It's almost to the very end in the book of uh, all the way back in the New Testament by the book of Revelation. In 3 John, in verse 11, it says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. Listen to this. See, because I, I must continue every week to continue to talk about this um, greasy grace movement where I have the grace of God in my life and so I'm good, you know. They really think they don't have to repent of their sins, that they could just, it only just takes, I can believe and be saved and that's it. When the Bible clearly says in, in the book of James that faith without deeds is dead. Faith without your works is dead. Remember, we talked about this in more than one uh, um, teaching. Follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. Listen at that. He that doeth good is of God. We don't just get saved and then we don't have to ever do anything again. We must walk with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to, to walk into those good works in which he has prepared for us beforehand to walk into. This is what the scripture says. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. If you're calling yourself a Christian, you're calling yourself born again, and, and yet you're still walking around doing evil, instead of living a life of good, you have hologram Christianity. It's a false source of light to create an image that's not really there. Are you getting where I'm coming from? Let's go to another scripture. 1 John. First John. In chapter 3 and beginning in verse 6, the Bible says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. It's not saying that whoever sins, uh, uh, has not seen him or known him. What the Bible is saying here is that, let's read it with the proper definition in context. Whoever so, whoever say they abideth in Jesus doesn't continue to sin, doesn't continue to practice sin. This is the difference in the born again and in the hologram Christian, the fake light Christian. The born again don't continue to practice sin. Whosoever continues to practice sin hath not seen him. They have not known Jesus. Are you getting it? This is from the scripture. It, this is from the word of God. Go back and read these scriptures for yourself. Are you born again or do you have 
hologram Christianity using fake light sources, another light source instead of the true light, using other light sources that create an image that's not really there. <laughs> Let's continue. Go to verse 8 in the same in the same chapter, in the same book, we just skip down from six to eight. It said, he who continues to sin is of the devil. I'm stumping on some toes now. And that's what I'm here for. True love sometimes stumps on toes. We're too close to Jesus returning, him actually returning for the church. For me to lie to you. For you not to have the correct information you need to have victory, to walk in victory starting today, starting right now. You don't have to worry about how to do these things to accomplish these things in your life because the Holy Spirit, the true light, will accomplish them in you. He that continues to sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. It's saying for this purpose, there's a reason why the Son of God, there was a reason why Jesus was manifest or was shown to the earth. What's that reason, brother, nobody? That he might destroy the works of the devil. This is what the Holy Spirit, the true light, does in you when he comes to live inside of the believer. He destroys the old works of the devil, those old things you used to do in your life, that old way you used to be. You will not be that way anymore. This is why Jesus was manifest, the scripture said. This is why he showed up in the earth. Has he destroyed the works of the devil in your life? Or do you have hologram Christianity? A fake light source that tries to create an image that's not really there. Oh, get what I'm saying today, brothers and sisters. Let's go to another scripture. In James. In the book of James. And in chapter 1. And beginning in verse 26, we're talking about hologram Christianity. Is that what you have? That this is where they use fake sources of light to create an image that's not really there. I'm comparing that to our Christian walk, our, our, our Christian lives today. Are you using some other kind of light? to create an image of Christianity, of being born again, that's not really there. James chapter one, verse 26 says, if any man among you seem to be religious, you seem to be saved, you seem to know the Lord and brighter look not his tongue and you can't control that perverted mouth, you can't control control that cursing people out you can't control the things you say backbiting against people you can't control gossiping it says he doesn't bridle his tongue but deceive of his own heart this man's religion is in vain if you can't control those things in your life then your religion is in vain Examine yourselves this morning to see if you're in the faith. Be honest with yourselves so that the Lord can, can help you to bring about change in your life and you, you will be really born again. Let's go to another scripture. In Luke. In Luke chapter 6, in verse 46, 
Jesus said out of his own mouth. This is what the Lord said. And why call ye me Lord? Why are you calling me Lord? Why are you calling me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. This is another way we'll be able to know in our own lives and be able to judge for ourselves. And it's best that you judge yourself now. It's best that I judge myself now before we get before the Lord. And he judges us guilty. And he judges us fake. He says, why do you say to me, Lord, Lord, why are you calling on me and you don't, and you don't even do what I tell you to do? Jesus said in, in another chapter in John, he said, it's he that... Uh, he that loves me, that, that does what I say. If you love me, you will do what I say, Jesus said. Examine yourself. Are you a real, true, authentic Christian, born again, turned from your sins and saved? Or do you have hologram Christianity using alternative sources of light to create an image that's not really there? I'm loving your soul by telling you these things this morning. Please examine yourselves. Please examine your heart. There's, If you look around today, we see the things that are in the Bible that's written about the last days that are, are being shown to us in the news every day. Plagues, earthquakes, volcanoes, hurricanes. We got dead animals all over the world, animal die-offs in the oceans, in the, in the seas. The love of most will grow cold, Jesus said. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Jesus spoke these very things in Matthew 24. We are in the last days. But no man knows the day and the hour. We're not talking about the day and the hour. No man does know. But Jesus said, you will know when he's near. This is what the scripture says. We will know. Are you real about your salvation? Or do you have hologram Christianity? Let's go to another scripture. Isaiah 29. This is going to be the last one. This one here is, is very powerful. Isaiah chapter 29. In verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said... For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. He's saying here, he's like, these men, and check this out, if you're this way, then we need to be praying to Jesus, praying for forgiveness, and praying for him to save us today. Even us that are saved, that we know that we're saved, we know that we're born again, we need to be in, in constant remembrance of this scripture. The scripture is saying the Lord was telling them that these people honor me with their lips. They always like, oh, I love my Jesus. Oh, my God is good to me. He shows me favor and all this. They honor me with, with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their hearts are cold towards me. See, we can, we can fake it till we make it anywhere else in life, but not with Jesus. Make sure you know him. It is so easy to, to really, truly get saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on, rely on, trust in, leaning on with all their heart, might, their mind, their soul, their understanding should not perish but have everlasting life. 
if you trust in what Christ did at the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, that he was fully man able to save us and fully God able to get up. <laughs> Glory to God. Rose again on the third day. If you trust in that alone and you turn away from your sins, we must repent of our sins. There is no such thing as just a, a grace that you sit on your hands and just coast into heaven, never being changed, never beginning to walk the way Jesus walked. We're to walk in his footsteps. We're to walk in love. We're to turn our back on our sinful ways. Are you hearing this? Are you truly born again? Are you truly a Christian? Are you truly a believer? And that name is honorable among any other title in the earth. I know the world ridicules it, but they won't do it long because Jesus is going to show up and actually take his people out of this earth because that time of trouble is already beginning. And once it does start, who shall be able to stand? Is your Christianity real or do you have hologram Christianity using alternate sources of light, fake sources of light to create an image that is not really there? Do you have the real light in you that makes you a real believer? Or you use other sources that are not really the Holy Spirit and just call yourself a believer? Think about this. This is serious stuff. This is your soul. May ears be open, Lord Jesus. I'm going to say this and then I'm done. These are just three sayings that I heard some brothers uh, that I read that some brothers wrote. And it was just so profound to me that I wanted to read them to you. And these will be things that you could just think about. And make that change. Just ask the Lord to come in another day. He'll come. Give up your way. He'll come in. Your life will be different. You will know he's real. He will show himself to you as he has in my life. And, and taking all those things that were in my life, a lot of them, out of my life now. No more drugs. No more alcohol. No more fornication. No more adultery. No more running the street looking for other sources of life to create an image. It's not really there. <laughs> Glory to his name. Listen at this and we're done. Don't let your lips and your life preach two different messages. Don't let your lips and your life preach two different messages. Number two, your most powerful testimony is how you treat others after church service is over. Your most powerful testimony is how you treat others after church service is over. And number three, what a shame it would be to live an almost Christian life then almost get in heaven. What a shame it would be to live an almost Christian life, then almost get into heaven. Receive Jesus this week. Receive him today. He will save. He is mighty to save. He is real. He is alive. He is coming soon. Be blessed. I'm second.